Kath. My name is Doug Jones. I'm Associate Director of Programming here at the Los Angeles Film Festival. And I could not be more excited to say, welcome to Gravity Falls Live. Yay. Before we get to any of that, a couple of things I wanted to mention. I wanted to mention Los Angeles Film Festival is uh, presented by Film Independent. And we're also produced in conjunction with our media sponsor, the Los Angeles Times, and our venue sponsor, the Regal Cinemas at LA Live. So they help us tell you what films we're showing and also actually help you us show the films we're showing. So big thank you to them. Uh, another two groups that I want to give a big, big thank you to. First, Disney Television Animation for helping us put this whole thing together. Would not be possible without them. And also, the hundreds and hundreds of volunteers who are helping us all throughout the festival. It simply would not be possible. As I was uh, getting ready for this morning's program, I was you know, on the internet looking at something, and I realized we made a big mistake. Gravity Falls premiered on TV on June 15, 2012. So we're one day off Second, it's second birthday. Yeah. Oh, it would have been perfect. But we are here now. I'm going to move forward because it didn't, you know, we've had Gravity Falls in our lives for two years. But I have to say, it did not take two years for this show to become important to all of us. I mean, almost immediately, almost from the first episode, there were fan sites on the website, there's a fan art, there's lots of cosplay, there's a podcast, uh, there's lots of crazy sweaters out there. <laughs> My, my son's own his first costume he wore to Comic Con. Dipper. So, this is very close to all of us. And uh, there's no reason why it should have taken that long. There are a few shows on TV that have this great sense of humor, a sense of style, an amazing sense of storytelling. Uh, not just episode to episode, but overall. Uh, this is really one of the best shows on TV. And I'm not saying one of the best animated shows on TV. I'm saying the best show on TV. One last thing, it's going to get serious for a minute. During this whole afternoon, please, if you haven't already, turn off your cell phones. Uh, we don't want any texting, tweeting, we don't want any phone conversations, and we certainly don't want any recording. So please, take a moment, turn off your cell phones. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce some of the people behind Gravity Falls. Please welcome the voice of Dipper, Jason Ritter. <laughs> Basically, we're going to kind of show you 
how the show is made, and in particular, we're going to show you the process, how we get from kind of a rough idea to what you've all seen on screen. So uh, one of the things we're going to do is we're actually going to um, read for you cut scenes that did not make it into the series. Um, so uh, we would all like right. to... Yeah. <laughs> start with just one very short, tiny scene from an episode you've seen that did not make it in, uh, and talk about what happened and the changes that were made. So, um, does anyone have your script? I have one. Which, which, which one are we doing? Uh, one, one, do one, eleven, one, or two, twenty-seven? Oh, the, uh, one that says, uh, Mystery Shack at the top. On your right. Got it. <laughs> Boom. Wait, Mystery Shack? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> this is what a show sounds like when it's not a show yet, and it's just a script. Gravity Falls, summer ween, cold open. Interior, mystery shack, kids' bedroom, crack of dawn. It's a fine summer morning in Gravity Falls. Birds chirp, the sun shines, Dipper and Mabel sleep soundly in their beds. A silent beat. Suddenly, pow! The door flies open and Stan bursts in, yelling, Wake up, kids! I got a big surprise for you! Stan takes his head in both hands and rips his own head off. <laughs> What's happening? The cops will never believe us! Stan starts laughing as his real head keeps popping out of his shirt collar. <laughs> Happy summer wing, you knuckleheads! Stan takes the fake head and throws it on a Mabel's bed. She shrieks. Ah! The kids each look like they had a heart attack, panicked from this trauma. Happy, happy what? Summer. Who? Summer wing! The people in this town love Halloween so much they celebrate it twice a year. <laughs> Candy pranks, ripping off your own head, the works! But summer! Dipper's face is buried in his hands. Every time I close my eyes, I keep seeing the same image over and over again. <laughs> Wait, a second Halloween today? That's gonna be amazing! Oh, it will be, Mabel. It will be. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, are you... Are you okay? <laughs> Working on my <laughs> evil laugh. <laughs> and... go! <laughs> Stop 
Merry Christmas, plus hilarious, and you've got yourself a deal. Seuss presses the head again. Seuss <laughs> happily presses three at once. The manager walks away defeated. Stan walks over with an industrial sized drum. Ha! When the children come to my door tonight, they're gonna walk, run away screaming from Stan Pine, Master of Fright, Boo! Stan yells Boo at a random baby. <laughs> Walks out of the store annoyed. The manager looks at Seuss, who is pressing every mechanical skull in his head. Her, her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> carrying a barrel of fake blood over his head. It's leaking. Uh oh, I think this one's leaking. Manager. <laughs> the police come and eject the Pines family from the store, said the manager. <laughs> Not today. Yeah. Stan tosses a handful of glitter into her eyes. <laughs> the five of them all tear out of the Halloween supply store. Mabel in a wheelbarrow, Dipper wearing a. a Costume, Stan with fake blood capsules falling out of his pocket. You paid for this stuff, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Cut the woman looking confused at fifty dollars in Stan bucks. Really <laughs> <laughs> run bills on lying legal paper. I hate summer weed. Let's move. And sing. So, I mean, that's just like a very small kind of microcosm example of like one thing that was good and maybe we could make it better. I mean, that's sort of our kind of goal when we're making the show is how can we get something funny for all the characters? How can we set up the story? Uh, how can we uh, kind of give each character a moment to, you know, have their, have their thing and shine? Um, and so uh, we're going to be showing you a few things sort of like this uh, today and some other stuff. Um, but once more, we'll check the schedule here. What, what exactly are we supposed to be doing right now? I think you might have a clip. Is it finished somewhere we need to hold on to? Oh, oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> one second, I might have a clip. <laughs> if I click it, will it find Let it clear. Let's find out, guys. <laughs> Don't let the all secrets revealed to you. <laughs> Some of you may recognize his name uh, as the dolphin monster. Mabel rides on her candy strip. 
Uh, Eric Fountain, uh, to his left, let's see, Dave Kimmel, Matt Brawley, uh, yeah, I'm not in there actually, but I, I do appear in a few spots in the show, don't tell Susan. It's a secret. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many pieces that go into it, and you know, sound design, and uh, sound effects, and music, and all that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, things, now this is, this is a small change, right? Like, it's not a big change, like we kind of went from one thing that was similar to another thing. Um, we have a completely different, like, never before scene, uh, not animated, didn't make it that far, but made it to board stage scene um, from an episode, uh, Dreamscapers. Um, Dreamscape was one of the hardest episodes we ever did because it had a lot of weird, crazy things. We had to both tell a story about Dipper and his uncle and how they didn't get along as well as they should, and also about Gideon and how he wants revenge, and also about this triangle thing, this weird Dorito, Illuminati, whatever. <laughs> um, and this is a character that had been, in our minds, forever when we created the series. I always sort of imagined him as this sort of trickster jerk um, of sort of a mysterious origin who had a role to play um, that would be revealed. We hit him throughout the show, but when it came time to actually have him make his entrance, well, what's the entrance? You know, how do we how do we make that right? And we we went through a few different versions before landing on the utterly horrifying him appearing in a forest and ripping his teeth out of a deer's face um, version. Um, and uh, we have a totally different version. Do you guys want to see it? Are you guys curious? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let me pull this up. We are going to, uh, we need to get the binder for Jason, that thing over there. Uh, what you guys are about to see is uh, something that you would see if you worked on the show. Every episode starts as a script and then goes through the board process where storyboard artists visualize the script, add jokes, figure out the staging, um, and uh, we go from that spot to we time it to music and sound, and we make our big decisions, what do we keep, what do we lose. And this one made it all the way through the board stage before we realized, oh my goodness, this has a huge story problem. Um, which we had no idea until we all watched it together. Um, but it's kind of cool, so um, I'm going to show you all. Let me pull it up one second. Jason, make way to the music for me. That's good. I don't want to find it as well. Um, so let me, let me actually first show you a little bit about kind of the development of the story. So before we actually got into the storyboarding, I um, I, I tasked the artist, I said, here's an outline of the script, visualize it, come up with images. What what should the dream world look like? That, that was the first thing before we could even get into one. Um, and uh, so we had one of our artists here, you'll see some very rough, uh, unfinished images. Can I move full screen? Oh, no. Eh, eh, full enough. We got the big screen up behind me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this is a visualization of what it might be like in Stan's, uh, in Stan's mind Stan's dreams when Dipper goes in. Uh, you know, here's some on the left. Uh, you see young Stan options. Is he a nerd? Is he a jock? You know what I mean? Um, and uh, little Dipper being harassed by him. Uh, here's another <laughs> potential staff. What Stan might look like as a kid. Um, it would have been great to see a scene with Mabel and him, but didn't make it in. Um, here's a uh, thought of maybe Stan's subconscious is visualized by a crazy vending machine full of secrets. Um, here's just some of the uh, artwork as uh, we were kind of trying to figure out. We decided that Bill should appear um, in a glaze driving by Birch Street because they got spooky eyes on him. Uh, that's not an accident. <laughs> um, here's just some more kind of our, our sort of final look of okay, it should be this sort of MC Escher esque. Um, and this rough sketch from one of our artists, Alonzo Ramirez, who's incredibly talented, uh, became the final uh, uh, sort of nightmare uh, realm. Uh, here you see sort of the storyboard and how that looks. Uh, you know, and uh, how it changes and kind of becomes the background process. Um, and our artists are, they're dope, man, they're the best, they're so good. Um, and uh, yeah, they create these sort of bizarre nightmare escapes that you see. Um, but yeah, so then we got to Bill. Well, I Bill, how do we introduce him? Uh, one version, we saw him being introduced in Stan's mind, uh, sitting on a giant couch uh, <laughs> with a big toe left hand. Um, uh, here's other sort of original manifestations, like how much can he transform? What does he do? What does he change into? Um, uh, and what is Gideon's relationship with Bill? There you can see a version where Gideon is really terrified of him. Um, and uh, just, you know, we kind of further along the design process went to color. I believe those are Thai numerals. Uh, I believe that's, uh, it says 618 over and over again. Yep. Um, and uh, here's the actual final model sheet. I don't think, I don't know if this is online, of uh, where we finally landed with Bill. Uh, we 
even something as simple as a triangle goes through a thousand different versions before we finish it. Um, all right, so let's show you this original intro. And this is super exciting watching me navigate a computer. <laughs> so, in point, where do I go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So, uh, basically, pretend you're at Disney <laughs> because this is what it's like to work here, seeing these rough drawings before they ever make it into a scene. Um, so, uh, basically, this is. Uh, uh, we start in Gideon's room, we see a picture of Grumble's family with eyes all scratched out because Gideon hates his arch enemy. His hand comes in, he lights the candle, they cut wide, Gideon shakes his mask, he says, Oh, you think that combination is safe in your mind, Stanford? Yes, Mash. We'll see what my new minion has to say about that. He looks through his journal, he begins to conjure him all in cold style. Demon of the Nightmare Realm, rise! <laughs> this giant pentagram appears on the ground. Uh, I don't know, uh, 
uh, leap into your uncle's mind and steal a combination to his safe or whatever. So the kid can, I don't know, steal a deed, destroy your house. <laughs> it's, it's complicated, man. The kid's got problems. <laughs> Pretty serious stuff. <laughs> hey, what's this? <laughs> Wait, you're going to get Uncle Stan's code by entering his dreams? Stop babbling. Sure, just like I entered your dreams. Hey, what's that? Whoa. <laughs> hey, what's that? He sits away from the mic. He snaps. And the moment he snaps, what's it? Where's the difference? Dipper is falling through the sky and Bill is uh, falling after him. I bet you're wondering if there's a way to stop me. There's a falling. Well, I don't want to give you any hints, but I bet there's a way for you to follow for you to follow me in his brain. Hey, there's the old man's head right now. You see this crazy giant stone stand head in a huge forest, they're falling past it. He turns around. See you in your nightmares, kid! He snaps. Wink. You can't tell when I'm winking. It looks like a black fly. Okay, later, bye! Dipper's <laughs> about to hit the ground. <laughs> he wakes up. <sighs> Panting. <sighs> Lightning outside, like nothing happened. <gasps> it was just a dream. Dipper looks at his hands. Huh? The dream is real. <laughs> <laughs>
took enough time to introduce the bill as, as the main uh, antagonist in a way, because you know, from the from the deer pull, from him pulling the deer, see that it was enough to show what kind of power he has, to also in a major way display how threatening he is as well as a character. Yeah. Great writing major. <laughs> Exactly, and we really wanted to. 
make it clear, because in this version, you see Gideon conjure Bill, and then Bill is there, and he, you know, Bill's kind of dismissive of Gideon, like, oh yeah, he did this thing, I got this mission, and I don't know what it is, but you don't get that sense, exactly, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, Gideon's out of his league. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, one second, I'm gonna check that. We only have so much time, I wanna make sure we get to everything. Well, I was gonna say, now that we've done, dug deep into something that we've seen, mm -hmm. I think maybe there's something that we haven't seen yet. You guys wanna see some new stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Can anyone guess whose room this might be? 
Robbie. <laughs> How could you tell? <laughs> the muffin is dead giveaway. He would say, "Close the muffin." Uh, Robbie's room is filled with very obnoxious poetry written on the walls. At least one of those says, uh, "I like to stand in the rain so nobody tell I'm crying." You know. That. <laughs> Here's a place Dipper goes in his adventures. I will not say when, where, how, or why. Um, here is a party that is thrown in season two. Uh, here's another place Dipper may wind up. Uh, Mystery Jack and I. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Bill doesn't come back. Uh, even the Gravity Falls library is spookier and creepier this season. Uh, we try to dig deeper into the mysteries that we've been teasing. Um, if you guys want to see the characters uh, you know, sort of put to the test uh, in more dramatic and weird and scary situations. That's that's what's coming. Um, uh, here's the Mystery Shack during an event. I won't say what. Uh, and here's someone who may be listening.
but I don't have any students. You can do it. You can do it.